Welcome to Good Games Spawn Point, the show for gamers by gamers. I'm Barjo. And I'm Hex. And I am Darren. Darren, question. Do you have any farming machinery in your chassis? Uh, one bolt from a combine harvester, actually. Oh, good. We're going to need all the experience we can get to play through Farming Simulator 2017. <laughs> Ready, steady, go! Combine away! Right, good luck. Thanks. Combine down. Let's make this happen. Plus, those silly and spooky yokai are back for round number two in Fleshy Souls and Bony Spirits. <laughs> Gotta befriend them all. all. Right, Darren, have you got some trivia for us? Oh, I certainly do, Hex. Brush up on your brain function, Spallings. It's time for Darren's Challenge! Today, I'm asking you this. Which Final Fantasy game deals with what was called the War of the Lions? Answer at the end of the show. Mm, I vaguely remember. Uh, vaguely won't get you there, Barjo. <laughs> how, how about we catch up on some gaming picks with Goose? <laughs> Goose! Goose! Hi. Goose! Hey, guys. Goose, have you ever wanted to work on a farm? Oh, yes, it was always my dream to work on a farm, shearing the cows and milking the sheep. Well, actually, I probably would have been a pretty bad farmer. What about you, Hex? Not really, no. Huh. Yeah, now I think about it, it probably would have played havoc with my allergies. Anyway, time for some of my gaming picks for this week. And first up, Microsoft Australia has announced that Minecraft Education Edition is now available to classrooms across Australia. The special version comes with a range of built-in lesson plans and lets up to 30 students collaborate together, while teachers get access to a special map view to monitor them. Next up, we have some news about a Sonic the Hedgehog film. Comic book movie director Tim Miller has revealed that he will be directing the film as a live action and CG animation hybrid, similar in style to movies such as Paddington. No news was given on when the film will be released, but hopefully it'll go fast. And finally, a report on gaming website Eurogamer has revealed the last Wii U console has rolled off the manufacturing line. Yes, Nintendo has apparently not placed any more orders for Wii U's to be built, clearly switching their focus onto production of their upcoming Switch console. Farewell, little Wii U. We hardly knew thee. And those are my picks for this week. Back to you guys in the studio. <laughs> oh, just thinking about farming and hay. <coughs> Thanks, Goose. Well, guys, we got Farming Simulator 2017 in this week, and I have to say, I don't really understand the appeal of these kinds of games. I mean, mostly it's just driving up and down a field in a straight line and different kinds of tractors. Yes, well, these games do have a large community that play them and legitimately enjoy them. And I think it's a combination of messing with the farming machines as well as the business management side of the game. Mm, affirmative. But I thought instead of us doing a review, we should test out your farming skills. The winner will get fame and glory. Glory, while the loser will be shamed for their newbery. So, I hope you're both ready for some hard farm work. Follow me! Let's do it! I don't think I have any farming skills. All right, Darren, thanks for organising these outfits. Uh, what exactly are we doing here? Ah, uh, well, Barjo and Hex, I have devised a simple pair of challenges to decide which of you is the best farmer. Oh. All right, OK, well, what's our first test? Well, this first challenge will test your crop harvesting skills and your creativity. Uh, Hex, I want you to use this combine harvester to draw a picture of me into this field of wheat. <laughs> Ready, steady, go! Uh, oh, Good luck, so, Hex. It's really slow. Go! This is the top of his body. OK. Oh, oh. Darren's head. head. Kind of curvature. Mm. One. Is it harder or easier than it looks, Hex? Nine, ah! eight, seven, six, five, the four, three, two, one. Time's up, Hex. Mm. Wonderful job, Hex. I reckon it looks like Darren. I, I think that's, that's uncanny. I'm going to give you four out of five for that. Whoa. Yes! Okay. So for my next challenge, I will test a fundamental skill of farming. The ability to steer trailers in reverse. Uh, Barjo, I want you to reverse this trailer into the middle car park spot. Mm -hmm. In this round, you will start with five points, but for every 30 seconds that you take, you will lose a point. Uh. On your mark, ready, steady, go! All right, um, there's another, there's another car here. When did you, oh, oh, it's not going well. <laughs> Okay, that's... Oh, that's... Uh, and... yeah, done! That's close. 
person. Good job. Good job. Oh, I'm pretty proud of that, if I do say so myself. Not, do? not bad for a first effort, Pancho. Thanks. You won negative two points, which means the winner is you, X-Ray! I think, I think Art is the real winner today, personally. <laughs> that was fun, Darren. Thanks so much. Oh. Well, you win a prize, Hex. Really? A fantastic prize, and that is an autographed picture of me! Oh. Mm. There you go. Um, wow, thanks mm. so much, Darren. It's suitable for honored. framing. Suddenly... I, I will frame it. I don't feel so bad for losing any more Hex. All right, well, let's head back to the studio. OK. okay. <laughs> well, that was a lot of stressful fun. <laughs> oh, 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 wait a second. Hmm. According to my scans, there are still a lot more men than women working in the gaming industry, even though coding is for everyone. True, Darren, but there are people out there right now encouraging young girls to get into coding. Yes, Goose recently met someone who started an Australia-wide competition to find the next tech girl superhero. Roll the tape, Lee. Yeah, so Tech Girls are Superheroes is the campaign of the Tech Girls movement. Girls join in teams and we match each team of girls with a mentor, a female mentor in industry, who guides them through the program for 12 weeks. So the entrepreneurship program really requires girls to find a problem in their local community they want to solve, then they have to look at how other people have solved that problem and come up with their own unique solution to that, and generally in the form of an app. Hey Sophia. Yeah. One of the teams in this year's competition is the Code Rangers, who were taught how to code after school by their coach Nicola. The girls were all students of mine. We had Claire and Sophia, who took on most of the technical side of things and built the app. I'm a coder. I'm a coder. Right, so you guys are the code monkeys. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. They do. <laughs> We had Angelica, our colour consultant and logo designer. Right, so you're the reason all the buttons are different colours. Yes. Excellent. And we had Sabrina, who was our project manager and also our creative for the pitch video. We think good education should be free. Reading Republic is an app developed by the girls to encourage reading and sharing amongst students. They can review books they've read, they can add more comments and reviews to existing books that other children have read, and they can also take quizzes. This is your library where mm -hmm. you can choose a book to do a quiz from. So you guys had to come up with all the quiz questions for each book? Yeah. And then you can make a book review. The idea is you could share these reviews with yeah, other people so reading the book. Can see them. Yeah, awesome. And what kind of programs are you guys working out of specifically for building this app? MIT App Inventor. And is that kind of like Scratch or something? Yes. You like yeah. connect blocks, but there's all this like a little bit more advanced. Would you say you guys are, are like your wizards at this software now, or are you still learning this one at the same time? Still learning. Still learning. Lots to learn in this one? Yeah. I guess learning is sort of the fun of it, actually, because when something ends up working, it's really good. Do you um, like it? I love it's... coding. <laughs> it's really fun. Yeah. I left the girls to put the finishing touches on their app, but before long, the final part of the competition would take place. They would have to pitch their idea in front of a crowd at the Tech Girls of Superheroes Showcase. OK, guys, we're here at Microsoft now. I'm about to go in and find out the results. Are you excited? Yes. yes. Very. Yes. Excellent. Are you in there with a chance, or are you just excited to be involved? We're in it with we're a chance. We're in a chance. Ah, OK, good. All right. You've got other teams here as well. Is that a bit intimidating? Is it a bit full yes. on? Yes. Have you no, seen any? Not really. Oh, not for you. OK. No. All right, well, good luck. Are you guys excited? Yes. yes. All right, well, let's get in there and find out how it's going to go. OK. All right. It was time for the pitches. Groups from across Australia showed off their tech in front of parents and important people from the tech industry. One team would then be crowned this year's Tech Girl Superheroes. We noticed that children in our community weren't reading in conversation. Our app includes interactive quizzes, there's coins with a reward. It's on the Google Play Store if you want to get it. <laughs> So um, I feel extremely lucky today to be able to announce our national winners in our primary school um, category. And they are our Reading Republic girls. So come on out. Guys, well done. You won. Fantastic. How does it feel? Really, really good. Amazing. Yeah! <laughs> OK, OK. Being a superhero is not about being good at everything, it's about finding that one thing you're good at that makes you different to everyone else, but also makes you awesome. And being young, it's not easy to be different. I mean, you don't want to stand out, and but you often do. So trying to turn that around to something positive, to say, well, you're not good at everything and you never expected to, but that's why you surround yourself with a team. They had a lot of uh, you know, professionals and people who had mm. careers in technology. Yeah. Was that quite inspiring? We yeah. got very inspired. Oh, yeah. excellent. All right, guys, now that you've won, do you think you're going to make another app? Yes. Yes, definitely. And what is it going to be? 
something. Something, all right. Carrying you've... on from reading. Confidential for now. Right, you'd like a yeah. sequel app Classified kind of thing. information. All right, guys, well, well done. Congratulations. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with next. Thank you. Excellent. Go celebrate. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, team. Great job. Oh. Uh, well, you two are now needed at the Ask Spawn Point desk. Oh. Off you go. Oh. Oh. OK, let's get straight into some questions and we'll start off with this one from King of Mustangs, who is in Mitcham, Victoria. Mustang Sally! You better slow that Mustang down. Ow. Mustang Sally, my baby! <laughs> Hi, Good Game. I have a couple of questions to ask you about Forza Horizon 3. One, is there an easy way to find the train? Two, is there a way to recommend drifting because I'm not very good? Three, what car do you think is the best? Four, what car do you recommend doing PR stunts in? Please answer. Big fan of yours and Darren is a noob. King of Mustangs out. Well, your Mustang Highness. There is a very easy way to find the train. Just find the tracks. The tracks run in a big loop on the northern chunk of the map, going past the Yarra Valley and the Arbag Festival locations. The train runs clockwise too, so if you drive along the tracks in an anti-clockwise direction, you should run into the train fairly soon. Hmm. As for drifting, well, I'll be honest, it's something I always struggle with too. Yeah, sick drifts take practice and work, but choosing the right car helps you a lot, so you'll want to avoid all-wheel drive cars, since they have too much grip to drift well. But typically, any rear-wheel drive car is good, such as a Commodore or a Mustang, for example, and the trick comes down to turning into the corners at the right speed and just feathering that throttle and steering just right to stay in control. Tap the brake a little bit, wait till you're going sideways for days. Yeah, find the sweet spot. Also, it's a great idea to look for other people's tuning setups that have been made for sick drifts. Look for ones called Drift or something similar. I mean, that should help you out. Yeah, definitely. As for which car we think is best, well, that's tough to say, really. So many cars are great for so many different reasons. Personally, if I feel like just driving about, it's a modern Lamborghini for me. They just have that great mix of speed and handling that make them fun to hoon about in. Fang it. Fang it all the way, Hex. <laughs> yeah. As for what car is best for PR stunts, well... The fastest car you can use is pretty much always going to be the best option. Faster cars mean better speed trap speeds and, of course, longer danger sign jumps. But speaking of fastest cars, let's go to this question from the King of Games, who is in Gamesville, Tasmania. Wow, the King of Games, the King of all games, Hex. Yeah, amazing, and in Tasmania too. Yeah. <laughs> what is the fastest speed in Ford Horizon 4? Well, your game's highness... I'm going to assume you mean Forza Horizon 3, since there's no such thing as Forward Horizon 4, as far as I know. But as for the faster speed, well, if we take a look at the speed trap here on the game's longest straight, I reckon that'd be where we'd find the fastest speed anyone has hit yet. And it looks like 489.55 kilometres per hour is the current record. Current record, you say? Current record. I reckon you could beat that. Is that a challenge, Hex? Yes. Are you challenging me right now? I'm challenging you right now. Challenge accepted! <clears throat> All right, OK. <clears throat> Uh, let's see here. You know what? I'm going to go for a Jaguar D time because I think you know that's a that's quite a good quite a good car for this particular adventure we're about to go on. And let's find a tuning setup that works. Um, what do you reckon about that one, Hex? Uh, nope. nope. That one. That one. That one. Done. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Strap yourself in, gamers. <laughs> Uh, all right. Oh, a bit of traffic to navigate here. Almost there. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Yay! Oh. Four seventeen. Oh, not bad. Not bad. Well, I didn't quite break the record, but I think with a bit of tuning and a bit more practice, I think that is an achievable goal. Hex. Yeah, definitely a valiant effort. Anyway. Thank you. All right. Well, let's move on to this one from the Invisible Boy, who is behind you, about to give Hex a wedgie. Oh. Ah, in Victoria. Oh. Ah. I don't see him, Hex. I don't see him. Well, he is invisible. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> oh. Hi, GGSP. One, what are all the Mario games coming out in the future? Two, Darren said in the Goose Darren Spectacular, there were no good wipeout, as in the TV show, games. There is a good one on iOS. No getting out of drinking from the noob cup this time, Darren. Three, what was the first Mario game you reviewed on the show? Answer or I'll give you all wedges for a year and turn Darren into a dishwasher! And Darren looks cool in Skylanders Imaginators, even if Darren disagrees. 
Well, Invisible Boy, <clears throat> well, Invisible Boy, we can obviously only tell you about the Mario games we know of. There's no way we could predict all the Mario games that will come out in the future. Mm. But out of the ones that are confirmed, we know Mario Maker and Mario Sports Superstars for the 3DS is coming out, as well as Super Mario Run for phones, which is coming soon. Mm -hmm. We also saw a few hints of new Mario games in the Nintendo Switch announcement trailer. They show what looked like a next major 3D Mario game and what looked like a new version of Mario Kart. It looked almost the same as the Wii U version, but you could see there were two weapon slots, which wasn't something the Wii U version had. Yeah, better battle mode maps, that's what I'm hoping for. Mm. I mean, obviously those aren't confirmed games though, so we'll just have to wait and see if Nintendo announces those as real games. Mm. But uh, I guess we should get Darren on the line to see what he has to say about this new accusation. <laughs> okay, why don't you call him, Hex? I just want to watch this. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I was going to get out of this one. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Darren, it's Hex and Bajo here. Oh, hello, how can I help you? Hey, Darren, well, <laughs> this is Bornley here who says you're a noob because apparently there is a good Wipeout game for iOS and you said there weren't any good See, Wipeout you games. you said there weren't any good Wipeout games, but apparently uh, there are. I can smell a noob cup. I can smell it in the air, Hex. Uh, well, Bajo, calm down. Obviously, this Spawnling is entitled to his opinion, but I stand by my statement that there are no good Wipeout games. At best, I would say they are tolerable. But regardless, having different opinions does not make someone a noob. Mm, I guess that's oh. true, Darren. Oh. I suppose you're off the hook. But uh, while you're here, can you remember what the first Mario game we ever reviewed was? Oh, of course I can. Huh. Our first Mario review was a big one too. Ooh. It was for Super Mario Galaxy 2. Oh. One of the all-time best games in the series. Oh, that's right. That was all back in 2010 on our very first season of Good Game Spawn Point. Uh, good times, good times. Oh. Uh, speaking of time, we're actually out of it for this week, so if you'd like to ask us a question, then you can send it in here. <laughs> Bye, Darren. Bye, Darren. Goodbye. He's always got a way to get out of the drinking from those noob cups, doesn't he, Yeah, Hanks? we try to get He's out of it too, way. though, don't we? We do, we do. Yeah. We, do. we <laughs> learn from the best, really. Ah, good questions, good questions. Yeah. Well, guys, we reviewed the first Yokai Watch game back in March, but there's already a sequel here already. Uh, actually, Bajo, the original came out in December last year, so we were late with our review of the game. <gasps> oh, that's right. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, well, it's time to find him and fight him once again. Oh, affirmative. Yokai on everywhere, causing you bones. Messing up your head. They'll trip you up, give you a flat tire. I'll make your socks go missing in a dryer. Yokai, mischief anywhere, and you may not even believe it. Introduce you to my friend He's found a way to connect with them He's got a yo Yokai Watch 2 comes in two versions, fleshy souls or bony spirits, similar to the way that Pokemon games can be bought in two flavours. Whichever one you get, the story and gameplay is the same, but there are different yokai to befriend in each version. Hmm. If you've never played a Yokai Watch game before, it basically involves exploring the world, taking on little quests or favours, finding hidden yokai using a special lens, and watching the ultimate moves fly in yokai combat. Plus a stack of other little mini games and activities in the world to uncover. It's all very Pokemon-like. At the start of the game, your character suffers from amnesia, one of the major afflictions of video game characters in recent years. So you must once again learn the ropes with the help of a friendly yokai ghost, Whisper. And things are certainly not right in Springdale. As you notice with your normally loving parents arguing over donuts. And before you know it, you're traveling through teleporting doors, visiting mysterious shops, running for your life from Oni, all while trying to solve what's going on around town. And the new Springdale in this game feels massive. There are all sorts of places to go snooping. The sewer system, people's backyards. And the whole time you'll be scanning for hidden yokai, looking under cars, in the trash, or even up trees. They've also added new areas outside of Springdale, such as a rural area where your grandma lives that you must travel to on public transport. Which brings me to my main criticism of the sequel. The quests you take require way too much travel from point A to point B, either on foot, even with a sprint button, or sitting through stop after stop on the train. Oh, 
and you're usually then told to go fetch another item at the end of it all. Ugh. Come on. Oh, at least they added quest waypoints this time. That eases the pain a bit. Yeah, I suppose it's good that there's a lot to distract you while you're out and about. Whether it's catching bugs or just levelling up your yokai and regular bouts of combat. Which is still good fun. Your yokai fight automatically, but there's still intriguing strategy in rotating your fighters in and out and choosing when to unleash those ultimate moves with quick mini games on the lower screen. Mochi. Mochi. It is fun slowly acquiring a huge array of yokai friends. There are more than 300 of them. <laughs> yeah, so one of the biggest new additions is multiplayer for up to four players called Blasters. Pew, pew. You actually play as a yokai, choosing from one of four classes, running around a map collecting oni orbs and bashing enemies. It's not a bad addition, but I think it's only really about as compelling as the other mini games they've crammed in there. It's more of a distraction from the main quest. Yeah, I think this is still the kind of game that's best played in short bursts, otherwise it does start to get a bit repetitive. Mm. The world is still super charming with some really funny dialogue and hilarious characters. The sequel does feel a lot more bloated than the original, but I still had a good time with it. I'm giving it three and a half out of five rubber chickens. Yes, it is very much more of the same, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. The last game was great and there is a lot to do, so I'm going to give it three out of five rubber chickens. Mm. It's also got a catchy theme song. Mm. <laughs> yo kai yo kai watch. watch. yo kai yo kai watch. Make your socks go missing in the dryer. yo kai yo kai watch. Well, we're just about out of time for another episode, but before we go, there's just one thing we have to do. Darren, the answer to your challenge, please. Affirmative, Barjo. At the start of the show, I asked you this. Which Final Fantasy game deals with what was called the War of the Lions? And the answer is... Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy Tactics. Tactics! That's it, I knew it all along. <laughs> Speaking of Final Fantasy, next week on the show, we're going to review the brand new world of Final Fantasy. Talking weird thing. Now what if it's a mirage? How incredibly rude. I am just as human as you. Ah, oh, looks like a mashup of all the different games, that one. Oh, and you know what else just came into the spawn point mailbox? Just Dance 2017! <laughs> Well, until next time, Barjo out. Hex out. Darren out. Oh, I can't wait to dance next week, you guys. I'm going to do the Barjo, which is my new new dance. Oh, yeah. I like a bit of this. Oh, yeah, what's that called? Um, I don't know. I'm just going to call it the Wormy Octopus. Oh, nice. What about you, Darren? I like to do the twist. <gasps> can't wait.